Well, I'm very interested in, in the historical side of the Bible because I taught history for 17 years and uh, ever since have kept up a lively interest in, in the Bible and history. One of the things people don't realise is that the Bible is a remarkable historical document. And a particular example is uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Most people don't realise that apart from the four Gospels, there are about another 19 non-Christian sources which talk about Jesus to some degree. Two particular ones worth noticing are the Jewish historian Josephus, uh, who was generally in favour of Jesus, although not a disciple, but also the Roman historian Tacitus, who was virulently against the Christians and condemned them, but both make reference to Jesus Christ. So to be very sure that Jesus existed and that we can have confidence in what the Bible says. Now, one of the interesting things in relation to that is there's actually more evidence for the existence of Jesus of Nazareth than there is for the existence of Alexander the Great. Although nobody would question whether Alexander the Great exists as a historical figure. I want to talk about Alexander the Great because he's an interesting character in history, uh, but also the Bible has something to say about him. He didn't reign for very long. He, he was uh, in power around 330 years before Christ. He only reigned for 13 years, yet in that time he managed to conquer a whole area right across from Macedonia and Greece where he began, across to the borders of India. Nobody in his time could believe how fast his armies moved. Now that's one of the things which is reflected in the Bible. The Bible talks about Alexander the Great in several places. First of all, if we think about the prophet Daniel, the prophet Daniel was a Jewish prophet who uh, lived in Babylon about 580 years before Christ. Now the first thing you'll notice is that's 250 years before the time of Alexander the Great. The prophet Daniel had lots of different visions given to him by God. He had a vision and he saw in this vision two animals. The first one was a ram and as he watched it expanded its territory and nobody could stop it. Until the vision went on, there came from the west a he-goat, but also coming extraordinarily fast. And the he-goat charged the ram and in a short time utterly destroyed it, trampled it underfoot. The record in Daniel chapter 8 doesn't make us guess as to what this means. It actually tells us a bit further on in the chapter. And it says that the ram was the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. The he-goat, it says, was the king of Greece. Now what's so remarkable about this, remember 250 years before the time of Alexander the Great, is exactly fulfilled by Alexander the Great, coming from the west, from Greece, coming with extraordinary speed, and to destroy their armies and their navy, and to take over their territory. So this exactly fulfills what Daniel had said. What about the other prophecies? Well, when Alexander the Great came into the area near to Israel, he came to the great city of Tyre. Tyre was an extraordinary place, the most powerful maritime city in the whole of the Mediterranean. It was also a very strong place. The Babylonians had tried uh, and failed to take the city. They managed to capture the bit of it which was on the land, but the strongest part was an island off the coast. So when Alexander came to this, he was heading for Egypt. Well, there was a lot of rubble left from the attack of the Babylonians. And so what he did was he got his soldiers to collect up the rubble and dump it in the sea and build a causeway. In seven months, he captured this city which had seemed impregnable. The remarkable thing is that if we go to the prophecy of Ezekiel, he had foretold this, having been shown this by God, uh, in exact detail. In chapters 25 to 27, there's a great deal about Tyre, a lot of interesting information. But the crucial bit is in chapter 26. It talks, first of all, about the attack by the Babylonians, and then partway through, it starts to talk about the Greeks. It talks about them taking the spoil of the city and the rubbish from the previous attack dumping it in the sea. 
exactly as happened in Alexander's day. Mm -hmm.